to the Foundation, a weekly Bible study for the youth of First Baptist Church of Kimberly City. Now let's join Associate Pastor Sean Gaston as he teaches from God's Word. Good evening, students. Good to see you in the church this Wednesday evening. I uh, hope you guys have had a wonderful week. I know this heat is really getting hard on a lot of people. Students, I know you started school, so I hope everything went well there. For some of you, I know um, you're doing school from home, homebound, and so you're going to have your struggles there as well as the students in school. I uh, just want you to know, students, that, that we are praying for you, teachers, that we are also praying for you. Um, for me, i got to remember to shut off my phone, so if you are watching this online, make sure that you silence all electrical devices. No. <laughs> um, no. So, again, today we're going to be talking about the armor of God. Last week, we talked about um, to stand strong, for the battle is real. So this week we're continuing on basically in, in Ephesians chapter 6 and we're going to be talking about the armor and the reasons for that, the different portions of that armor um, over the next uh, few weeks. And so with that, it's important I'm just going to kind of overview a little bit first. I just want us to, to remember that the things that we struggle with, Paul talks about in, in Ephesians 6, um, or the things that we struggle with is not of flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of darkness, against evil spirits uh, and forces in the heavens. So our battle ne uh, is not necessarily with the things that we can see, hear, touch, feel, you know, and, and the way that we battle um, shouldn't be with our, our five senses as well. So, so often we have a tendency to fight back our struggles with these in these different things that we're battling with or wrestling with um, in our own physical physical strength, understanding, and emotion. And so, you know, and we wonder why when we do these things, when we attack these things in this way, you know, why we can't get through them or why we can't over, overcome them. So Paul told his believers to wear the armor of God. The armor that we wear uh, in battle is not our own armor, and that's incredibly important for us to realize. So we can do nothing in our own strength to win spiritual battles. Again, it's a spiritual battle. This is not our own battle. So that, nor can we take uh, any steps in our own abilities to win the spiritual warfare because it's important that we realize that we need to wear God's armor, not our own. So... You know, when we look at this, you know, the, the reason why we don't wear our own armor um, and that we put on God's armor, you know, when we reflect back to the Old Testament when, when um, you know, the battle with David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, uh, 45 through 47, you know, David told Goliath that the battle was the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. See, David, he was able to stand firm. He was confident in what, I mean, his God was able to do. Not in his own abilities. Remember, when, when uh, he approached Goliath, Goliath, you know, laughed and mocked him. You know, why do you send a dog to fight? You know, you're sending a boy into battle. And so all Goliath could see was this young boy, you know, and all David could see was his God and the ability that God, you know, can do all things um, and that there's nothing impossible with God. So even though everybody else, all the other soldiers were fearful and uh, were retreating back, David was able to stand firm and to hold his ground. And so even though the battle is real for each and every one of us, it's important that we realize that we have victory only because God is on our side, just like David showed there, you know. And so when we try to, to put on um, other people's battle, our armor, you know, we try to put on our own armor and put certain things onto our lives that we think will protect us. You know, sometimes we think, well, you know what, if I just have enough money, that will protect me. I'll, I'll be able to get by, do well, I can live comfortably. You know, that's a, a form of armor, that worldly armor that we try to put on 
sometimes. And other times it's, it could be, you know what, if I, if I just look good enough, then, you know, or if I bulk up and I'm strong enough, then I can battle strong. You know, and other times it's if I can become popular, if I can just uh, make people like me, if I can get into the right crowd, then I can uh, live a successful life and feel like I, I have victory. So why is armor important? It is important because it's, it's helpful to remember that um, the general outline of the book of, uh, of Ephesians um, remember, as we, we look back all the way through the different weeks, we've, we've gone through this for uh, the last couple of months. It says the first three chapters in Ephesians, they kind of give us a, a theological foundation, right? The things that we, we stand on. Paul had, was talking to the church at Ephesus, these young Christians, about the, the foundations of what it was to be a Christian. So we can experience spiritual victory because, listen, as a Christian, we are in Christ, in the final three chapters of Ephesians that foc focused on the practical living. Um, because we are, are saved, we have victory. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we still must live out our lives um, in faith. You know, even though we can't see and understand all things, it's important that we trust God in all things. And so in those uh, last three chapters, Paul really emphasized the importance of, of living a victorious life in our personal lives, in our homes, uh, in our churches, and in our workplaces. And so living out faith daily, uh, though it's not easy, uh, because we all have struggles, right? We have struggles. You have struggles. I have struggles. We all have struggles. Um, but the things that, that um, we struggle against, again, are, are, the, are the powers um, of the enemy. And, you know, he says that it's the powers of, of, of darkness against evil, spiritual forces in the heavens. So the things that we struggle against, the things that we war against, again, are not against each other, but they're against these, these uh, heavenly forces, right, that are, are trying to battle against um, our perspective on what Christ has for us. So living out our faith uh, even though it's not an easy thing and we struggle against these powers, the only way that we can fight these battles is to put on the full armor of God. Um, so let's, let's read real quick what, what Paul says here. So starting in Ephesians chapter 6, um, you know, verse, just right before verse 14. So 13, we'll go ahead and read that. So it says, For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist the evil day, um, and having prepared everything to take your stand. So listen, at that very beginning, it says, for this reason, right? Take up. So he gives us a, a reason. The things that we're battling with, all those things that I just talked about, that reason, for that very reason, it's important that we take up the full armor. So not just part of it, but he says right off the bat, make sure that you realize that you put on the full armor of God. You know, don't go into battle just haphazardly, just putting on some things not worrying about the other. And it's important that you realize the aspects um, behind each and every part of that armor. You know, we, we can read about and, and um, you know, know about, but if you don't fully study what each of these things uh, actually means, um, then you're not going to be able to utilize that armor uh, in its proper form. So it says, for this reason, take up the full armor of God. So that, so the reason behind it, that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having uh, prepared everything to take your stand. So how do we take our stand? How do we stand firm like we talked about last week? And how do we resist the things of the devil? How do we resist temptation? How do we resist falling into the, the things of this world? You know, when it comes, um, you know, for, for, you know, it's not just teenagers, but us as adults, uh, peer pressure, you know, the things that we do to try and um, just become acceptable to the, the things of this world. It's important that we realize that those lies, this deception from the devil, the way that we can stand against that, um, to stand firm, is to do certain things. 
that we put on the full armor of God. It says, therefore, starting in verse 14, stand therefore with truth. So it's important. The very first thing he says in that 14 is stand. Again, stand. Stand firm. Don't retreat. Don't run back. Stand firm. And in order to stand firm, the very first thing it talks about is that we do this with truth. So, and he says, this truth is like a belt around your waist. Um, righteousness, like armor on your chest. And your feet saddled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the, of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the spirit with every uh, prayer and request and stay alert with all perseverance and uh, uh, intercession for all the saints. And pray for me, the message, the message may be given uh, to me when I open my mouth to make known my boldness, the mystery of the gospel. For I am an ambassador, ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold enough to speak about as I should. So what we're going to focus on today in this battle, in this putting on of armor, is um, putting on the belt of truth. So Paul commands us to wear, right, the full armor. And no one piece in this armor is insignificant. No one piece should be ignored. If any piece of the armor is missing, a gaping hole remains. And we are vulnerable to the enemy. So Satan aims at the vulnerable areas in our, in our life, right, where we put down the armor. And he is systematically trying to weaken each and every one of us. I know, like, um, in any sport that I play, you always look for the, the weakness in uh, your opponent. Um, and so, you know, in a battle, when this talks about wrestling, I know in wrestling, if any of them had, like, any kind of... Uh, protective device on like an a strap or or any kind of thing to protect their knee or something like that that you knew that that was an injured area it was vulnerable um, and the same thing with a stance if if any at the very beginning um, in a wrestling match if a person is not standing firm they don't have a good stance then they are vulnerable and they are exposing themselves so if they just stand upright I mean they're giving away their legs and in the first thing that your enemy wants to do is to take away your legs. And if they can get you on, on the ground, then they can a lot of times just wreak havoc on you. So it's important that we remember that we stand firm, right? That we prepare ourselves, that we put on the full armor of God. And it talks about first this, this belt of truth. So Paul uh, was in prison again when he wrote this, right? This letter. And he was likely thinking about... Um, such a soldier, you know, that he was dealing with. Maybe that was guarding him uh, during this time. So it's important that we remember that in this putting on of the, of the belt of truth in Ephesians 6.14, the belt um, of a Roman soldier uh, was typically a wide leather belt designed to hold the soldier's tunic in place. See, their, their uniform that they wore or their clothing that they wore was like a tunic. So this long, almost like dress, like uh, uh, attire that they wore. The, the soldier then, when he was ready for battle, would tuck his outer garments under the belt. So he would fasten the belt nice and tight, right? And he would take the, the looseness of that tunic and he would pull it up and tuck it in so that he wouldn't step on it. It wouldn't trip him up in, in the time of battle. And so, or hinder him from running and fighting. So it wasn't something that was going to be obscured. Just like I remember in football, whenever we were on the line, we didn't want them to be able to grab our jerseys and do all this. So we would cinch our, our, uh, our jerseys incredibly tight so that the enemy would have our, the people, our opponent would have nothing that they would be able to grab a hold of. And it wouldn't be something that was going to trip us up, that it's going to snag or anything like that. And so this belt... Um, was wrapped firmly uh, around their go gourd, so it was around their, their waist. So when the belt was tightened, he was ready for battle. And on the other hand, listen again, that slackness um, of the belt meant that the soldier was off duty, that they were relaxed, right, that they weren't in a position where they were ready to fight. 
But the Christian who is ready, the Bible says that we should be ready in and out of season, right? For battle must fix uh, in place his commitment to know, believe, and live out uh, this, the, this truth. So remember, first off and foremost, that Satan is a liar. And, and our main focus, I don't want you to think that our focus needs to constantly be on the devil. But just realize who he is, right, and where his deception comes from. He is a liar, right? He is not God. He is a fallen angel. And if you do studies on, on, on Lucifer, you, you'll see um, all these different schemes. And it's important for us to know our opponent, right? But our focus needs to be on the Lord. So one of Satan's primary attack strategies is to feed us lies uh, and, and to entice us uh, into these lies. And so, you know, since the time of Adam and Eve, uh, you know, with the half lie in the Garden of Eden, you will not surely die in Genesis 3, 4. The enemy has promoted lies, and he continues on in that lies. And so the best defense against the lies of Satan is truth, the truth of God's word. And so um, what is not truth? A lie is not truth, right? And so what is truth? Jesus is truth. John 14, 6 says that he embodies truth, and we have truth in us when Jesus dwells within us. So when you accept Christ, when you became a Christian um, and the Holy Spirit came to dwell within you, then you have truth within you. And it says, uh, when he lives within us, nothing, including the powers of, of Satan, can separate us from the love of God. And that's Romans 8, 39. Likewise, God's truth that sets us apart can make us holy, holy, right? John 17, 17. We can, can't consistently uh, win spiritual battles if we don't know God's word. And that's why I tell you, students, that's so important to be in God's word. Satan wants you to, to be deceived. And how can he deceive you? By not knowing truth. If you are continually ignorant to the ways of God and the things of God, then your enemy can wreak havoc on you. Why? Because you have nothing to stand on. You're leaving huge gaps in your armor. So Paul had, no, um, had more in mind than just a theological teaching when he called believers to stand firm. So he told them with this belt um, of truth buckled around your waist, Ephesians 6.14, even though we do not um, have the truth... Uh, in us, when, when we are Christians, we still must uh, live out. So if you haven't been studying God's word, if you haven't been pouring in this thing, it's important that wearing the belt of truth means living a life of integrity and honesty. That's being who God says that you are when people are watching and when they are not. Okay, a true person of integrity. So... Um, When we look at the opposite or, you know, when we don't put on this, this belt of truth, um, we succumb ourselves to, to Satan's temptations. When we speak um, or live anything less than the truth, we don't know Jesus in a personal way. And when we don't know Jesus in a personal way, when we can't wear the, this belt of truth, we don't... Um, consistently tell the truth and then we are um, we aren't wearing that belt of truth right when we are lying and when we are deceived or are being a person of deception then we aren't wearing that belt of truth and what are we doing we're not only tripping ourselves up um, because we haven't um, armed or prepared ourselves or cinched that belt of truth around our, our waist then we ourselves are becoming a trip hazard trip hazard not only for ourselves but those who are following us, right? So maybe uh, you regrettably know the pain of living a life of lies. A little white lie may not seem so bad at the, at the time, right? Um, it may have made sense uh, to lie in order to protect yourself or somebody else, but the first lie led to another lie, which led to more lies, and even then this lie continued to go on, right, and became this web uh, of lies and deception. You know, it's just like a drug. Nobody gets into doing uh, drugs to become addicted. You know, and that's part of that deception. Nobody lies right right off the bat in, in means of continuing to lie and become a person that is considered dishonest. 
So a dishonest lifestyle um, in words that lead to bondage. Uh, realize this, that only the truth, only the truth, John 8, 32 tells us, will set us free. So students, I just want you to know, it's important that we put on this truth, right? That we put on the belt of truth, that we prepare ourselves for battle, that we stand firm. So let me go ahead and pray with you. Get into God's word this week. Prepare your heart. Prepare for what's ahead because remember, the battle is real. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time in your word. I thank you for this time with these students. I pray, Father God, that you would just help uh, them to see the importance of being uh, in your word, of realizing that your word is truth and that it is through you that they can uh, receive that truth. Jesus, you tell us in your word that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that nobody comes to the Father except through you. I thank you for the victory that, that we have in and through you, and I thank you for the truth that you speak in to the lies that, that this world will so often feed us. Lord, help us in this battle to stand strong, to stand firm, to be true ambassadors for you, to be true soldiers for you, so, Lord, I just pray these things and praise you now. In Jesus' holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Students, I love you. I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Stay tuned for Pastor's Message tonight. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Foundation Bible Study. Remember to tap like and share to help spread God's word. If you have any questions, please contact us through social media or through our website at fbckc.com. Keep building that foundation.